are even remotely familiar with book talk, you more than likely associate it with the romance genre as that is its most well-known niche. However, book talk is a rich and diverse community with many different members and audiences who are participating within the larger book talk umbrella. You have BIPOC book talk, YA book talk, horror book talk, you even have book talk for those who only read and review audiobooks. There is something for everyone, even though it can admittedly be very, very difficult at times to actually find your community. But we are not here to discuss all of the different communities within book talk, but we are instead focusing on one in particular, which is dark romance. And even more specifically, we are focusing on a very loud and very wrong group within this community. Before we get into it, I do want to state that I have plenty of friends who read dark romance and I myself used to read quite a bit of uh, dark romance fan fiction. And I understand that it can be a very cathartic genre for people that helps them confront things that have happened to them in real life in a manner in which they can control. And I also know plenty of people who are responsible about how they consume the genre and how they recommend it because they understand how important boundaries and consent are. However, similar to the situation we had with extreme horror a few months ago, there seems to often be people who use these very extreme and oftentimes taboo genres to simply be a bad person. And they use the idea that these genres are meant to push boundaries to pretend as though real life has no consequences and they can do whatever they want. Recently, this particular group of people that I am talking about caused quite a bit of controversy when they decided to begin recommending very dark romance to a 16 year old boy on BookTok who made a video holding up YA books such as The Hunger Games and Maze Runner. But this isn't the first time that BookTok has been in hot water for behaving inappropriately. So let's provide some context and look at a previous controversy first. You may have seen this in the comment section of any mildly attractive white man posting thirst traps online. Book talk has been summoned! While this initially referred to videos showing things like meet cutes and romantic moments, the summoning of book talk has become synonymous with the erotica side of book talk. You will often find comments such as book talk has been summoned or wait until book talk finds you in these thirst traps that these men post. Many times men posting these thirst traps have OnlyFans accounts. They are OnlyFans creators who are simply catering to an audience that may earn them income. This could potentially be where the lines were blurred in that these creators are more likely to encourage these summoning behaviors and the raunchy or explicit comments that are left on their videos because that is their job. And I'm gonna repeat that, that is their job. Meaning that then these commenters were emboldened by the positive response that they received from those creators and then felt assured that this behavior was not only okay, but encouraged. Now, please note that I don't mean that OnlyFans creators are responsible for this mess, only that I have suspicions that the relationships that are formed parasocially online by them have helped the lines get blurred and how the summoning culture became so sexually charged. Earlier this year, book talker Kiara Lewis found herself in hot water when the wife of a Seattle Krakens player called for an end to the online sexual harassment of her husband. This was an interesting situation in that the whole ordeal seemingly started when the Seattle Krakens account began pandering to book talk in order to take advantage of the love that book talk has for hockey romance. In particular, Book Talk seemed to really love their forward Alex Wenberg, and many Book Talkers were creating fan edits of him and fan casting him as their favorite book boyfriend. 
Enter Kiera Lewis, a book talker with a large following who was invited by the team to a Stanley Cup playoff game after going viral for a video in which she made explicit comments about Alex, including items such as, Baby, I might not got five holes, but I got three. Since you're so good at assisting, why don't you assist your teammates in scoring all three of my holes? Hello? Though she initially entertained the attention, Alex's wife eventually called for an end to the sexual comments that had continued to escalate. In the statement that Alex released, he stated that users had crossed a line by leaving these comments on his wife's Instagram account, including on photos of their young child. Lewis later claimed that her content about Alex was a joke, calling book talk the only place where we can just have fun and not really take life seriously. This is a sentiment regularly seen on book talk and many other book communities when certain factions of the community feel as though that reading has gotten just a little too political, aka when they or authors they love are called out for being shitty people. This perspective is strange in that reading is inherently political and for many people their mere existence itself is a political act. And when people are making this statement of book talk is too political, it often shows how much privilege that person is used to having when navigating the world of literature. The reality is that these fictional books, the fun we have on book talk, all of that is influenced by our own personal beliefs, experiences, etc, etc. And in the same vein, our personal beliefs are influenced by the media that we consume, and that does include books. Why do you think Nazis burn books? Why do you think Black people had to fight so hard for access to education? Why do you think Moms of Liberty is desperately trying to get diverse books out of their children's libraries? And oftentimes the people who are complaining that it's just fiction, it's just a book, they are the same people who will go on and on and on about the relationships within the book, the author, the writing, displaying that the book has in fact impacted them personally. Like why else would so many of you get excited about videos of men who look and act like your book boyfriends? According to Oatly, fiction presents a simulation of real world problems and therefore has real consequences for the reader. Often, when someone reads a fictional story, identification with the characters in the story and emotional involvement in the story causes the reader to sympathize with the characters and perhaps even experience the events in the story as if the reader has experienced the events him or herself. These books do not exist in a vacuum. Their contents influence their readers and oftentimes reflect the thoughts, opinions, and desires of the author. And the influence this content has is something readers should consider when doing things such as recommending dark erotic romance to strangers online without providing any context or say, I don't know, <laughs> telling a 16 year old boy to read them and then making comments on building a biker. And the actions that you take online do not exist only online. They have an impact on people and you cannot expect others to simply not have an opinion on that. Meaning that when you as a stranger go to someone's video and comment sexual things to them, they and others within that space will have opinions on that. And just because it is in an online space does not mean that it's above criticism. And I find it very concerning that when people who do this want to distance themselves from their actions by claiming it's just a book or it's just a joke, it's just a little silly comment on TikTok. Don't be dramatic. Because there are real people behind that screen and these people are impacted by the things that you say to them in both positive and negative ways. Now, let's get to the meat of what we're discussing today. At the end of October, a teen boy I will refer to as Jay posted a video to his account with the words, you probably get so many girls with your bike and 
a silly sound. This user posts videos with his helmet on, and at that time, he did not have his age in his bio. However, he does have a video talking about school as well as a video from 1026 that says, teenager who doesn't smoke, drink, or party. Despite that, the comment section looked a lot like this. Just a few of the comments on the initial video are here, and these include items such as, congratulations, you found Book Talk, good luck, and Book Talk found you amongst others such as book talk just found you prepare for the numbers to change and tag book talk we will change that jay then proceeded to make a video replying to a comment that said it's because book talk hasn't found you yet where he then held up the hunger games and maze runner with the caption what is this book talk now if someone is holding up multiple YA books, one should be able to reasonably assume that they are not actively looking for dark romance recommendations. One may want to assume that that person is the intended audience for those books and steer clear of making sexual comments towards them. And one would think in this case, but one would be wrong. The comment section of this video was full of sexually charged comments, including comments that were, in my opinion, grooming comments, and it wasn't too long before the teen placed his age in his bio. That unfortunately did not stop the comments that were flooding in, as many continued on with comments that, again, in my opinion, can only be called grooming. Other commenters were recommending sexually explicit books to the teen, including titles such as Punk 57, Haunting Adeline, and The Ritual. And again, many people began to call out the people recommending these books as they contain extremely dark themes and shouldn't be recommended blindly to anyone, much less a minor. I want to start with something people vehemently argued against, which is that they shouldn't have summoned book talk. As I mentioned previously, the summoning of book talk has become synonymous with erotica and very, very often dark romance. Meaning that by nature, when you attempt to summon book talk, you are doing so to bring in an audience of, um, they refer to themselves as feral book talk ladies. So it begs the question as to why are they summoning others to a minor's page? The implication is there when you make the comment that you are summoning book talk, that this is somebody who fits the mold of the characters that you sexually desire and enjoy reading about, which in turn means that you are stating, whether you like it or not, that that person is somebody that you see as sexually desirable. Therefore, this should A, not be done on a minor's page, B, not be done without consent, and C, not be done without verifying that that person is of age, which again ties into points A and B. And the comments that many people left show, in my opinion, that they were aware of what they were doing. One of the first things I noted upon entering that comment section were comments that were focusing on the teen's youth, his innocence, and the potential to corrupt him. There were commenters, as you have seen, who seemed enthralled <laughs> with the idea of corrupting this teen so that he may in turn become the biker boyfriend that they have been reading about. And this is where we can note the grooming behaviors, again, this is all in my opinion, that would be glaringly obvious to more people if this had been a situation in which a teen girl was receiving these types of comments from adult men. We would likely very quickly identify their comments regarding youth and innocence as something predatory and dangerous. So I want to take a careful look at the language that is used within these comments. And when I say I pared down so many comments, it was well over 200 screenshots that I had, and that didn't even cover all the comments. 
that were left on this video and his other videos. But when you take a look at this language, you'll notice some common denominators. You will notice language where he is described as a sweet boy, an innocent baby. He's a dear sweet child. He's not ready. And then you have, in the same vein, discussions about finding him, uh, discussions about corrupting him, discussions about building a biker. And this language is all grooming language. If we had a teen girl holding up YA books and men were commenting things like, she knows what she's doing, she's so innocent, we can corrupt her, I think she knows what she's doing, we would be so alarmed. So why are we not alarmed when this language, this very blatant groomer language is being used on this child? And keep in mind, it is entirely possible for these people to not necessarily intend their language that way, but that's still a problem. You can do things that are harmful by accident. And I just want everybody to really can stop and consider why it is acceptable to leave these types of comments on a teen boy's video. And so taking a look at some of these comments, so for instance, you have this first one up here that says, he's not ready for dark romance. He must be protected. And when you go look at this person's profile, they have a fairly decent following. And in their bio, they specifically state that they are a mom who reads. And so I find it concerning that a mother is going into the comment section of a teen boy to talk about how he isn't ready for something, how he must be protected because you have no business there in the first place. You have no business interacting with him in this way. And again, book talk is not only dark romance. So why bring it up in the first place? Then you move on to another person who states, oh, that poor thing. Question is, do we corrupt him? And this again lingers and focuses on the potential to turn him into that dark romance book talk boyfriend that everybody wants, which is inappropriate considering his age. It's inappropriate considering he was not consenting to any of this attention. Another one we have says, all right, book talk, leave him alone. We cannot corrupt this one with the like sweat smiley face thing and that person is 23 years old so again somebody who should be checking bios to make sure they're interacting properly with people especially when talking about corrupting them but you know the talk about corrupting is interesting to me because why would you need to corrupt an adult man it it ties in again to the grooming of this child and then we have somebody who is a student teacher, somebody who posts publicly on their own page about being a student teacher and how they are finishing up their master's degree, who comes in and comments, oh, how cute, who's going to tell him? But I have to ask, tell him what? What are people supposed to tell him? This is a video of a teenage boy holding up young adult books. Why does there need to be any kind of implication made on this video? Even if you just think it's cute, the who's going to tell him is what starts bringing in those, those, it's blurring the lines, it's inappropriate, it doesn't matter what your intention was with it, it's not, it's no good, you shouldn't be doing it. What was even more alarming maybe was the fact that there were comments that were left on these on videos discussing the situation in which users were stating that he's a teen boy, he likes the attention. Comments from adult men who were saying that they would have loved the attention as a teen and this plays into the idea that teen boys and men cannot be victims of sexual assault because they're hormone driven and they just want to fuck. A quote from Peter Pollard of One in Six, which is an organization with a mission to help men who have had unwanted or abusive sexual experiences in childhood, reads, We were all raised in a culture that says boys are always supposed to initiate and enjoy a sexual experience, and males are never supposed to see themselves or be seen as victims. Peter then continues on to say, it's even more confusing if it's a boy who is in the less powerful role. 
even the boy has a stake in believing he wanted it rather than being seen by himself or others as a victim. Therefore, it is vitally important that we take situations such as this very seriously when they arise. This brings me to my critique of summoning culture as a whole, regardless of the age of the person who the summoning is focused on. As I noted earlier in the video, Seattle Kraken's forward Alex Wenberg was forced to issue a statement regarding the intensity of the online sexual harassment he was receiving. We have seen videos from men on TikTok expressing discomfort with women calling their hands necklaces and making lewd comments to them. And before I get further into this, I do want to share a TikTok from a creator who spoke out on this when the situation with the teen boy was happening. All right, book talk. Um, I'm going to get heated in this and I already know it. I've tried to make this video a couple times and I've lost my temper. Um, there's two book talks that I'm talking to right now. I'm talking to the book talk that actually likes to read books. It doesn't matter what books you like to read. I'm talking about to the book talk that actually likes to read books. Y'all need to get on the rest of book talk, the other side of book talk, the second half that I'm talking about. This, the, the, the other book talk is the book talk that believes that men don't have consent. Men can't give consent. Men want all the attention that they're getting. Book talk that believes that they have the right to comment on someone because they're a sports character. And then these people aren't characters in your books. They're not. They're not characters. They're real people with real feelings and they give a shit about their life. But for you... When, when someone draws a line and say, hey, that's too far, for you to go past that line, there's three options when that happens. One, you can disengage entirely. Super simple. Just don't comment any further once they say, hey, that's my line. Second, you can take responsibility, credibility, and accountability for your actions, and you can say, hey, I am sorry. I didn't realize that I had done this and made you uncomfortable. From now on, I will respect your boundaries. That is the bare minimum. And third is some people's favorite. It's to push it even further. When someone says, hey, this has made me uncomfortable. This has made my wife uncomfortable. This has made my family life unacceptable. And then you go on a family post and you talk about how attractive this man is and how he can do better than his wife. And how, while, while there's a picture of his wife and child and him all together, that's weak. And then a 16 year old boy, yes, He's wearing a biker helmet. You don't know what he looks like. But the moment you find out he's 16, there are people, there are really good people that found out he was 16 and was like, that's, that's, I'm done. I'm not gonna, not gonna say anything else anymore. That's fine. That's acceptable. That's good. There are people that are like, oh crap, my bad. Didn't know. That's, that's phenomenal. I'm proud of you. Then there are people that say, hey, you're 16 years old. 16 years old. You can barely legally drive. You can't vote. You can't live on your own. You can't make decisions for yourself legally. And you can't legally drink or enlist in the military. You're not an adult. You can't legally give consent. How about you read this super freaking graphic book? Learn what you're supposed to do, which in my opinion, just my opinion, you should, if you want, if, if you meet a man that wants to do that to you, and you actually read the trigger warning and understand that it's non-consensual and dubious consent. And dubious consent only exists in books. It's not CNC. You can't make it something that it's not. If you meet a man that wants to treat you like that, you need to freaking run. Not encourage the behavior. Especially in a freaking minor. Do you understand how disgusting you are? You're 16 years old. Read this book. Learn what you want. And come find me in two years. You know who should find you right now is the freaking cops. Y'all would be irate. I freaking rate. If a man said this to a woman. People lose their minds because a celebrity dates someone that's 25 years old. Legally an adult. Physically, mentally developed enough to handle that kind of complex situation. And you lose your mind. But then you see a boy. A boy wearing a helmet and you don't retract your statement. You don't apologize. You double down and you say, Hey, find me in two years and do this heinous thing. Read this book that you can't understand and think that that's how you're supposed to treat women. No. 
You need to do better book talk. I only make videos about things that I know about. I don't comment on political issues. I have my beliefs and my opinions. This shit I know about. This shit I've been through. You don't understand how much damage you can do to somebody with words, especially words like these. Y'all need to be better. You wanted to be a fantasy character in a novel? Congratulations. You are. You're Deontae from Akatar. You believe that everyone wants your attention. Everyone wants to be touched by you and you can do no wrong. You're a gift from the gods. Congrats. You're a creep. You're a weirdo. And you're a freaking predator. To the other part of book talk. The part that actually enjoys reading books. The part that enjoys the stories and the worlds and the safe places that books have been for all of us for years. It's our job to look out for people that this is happening to and to call out the people that are doing it. Because that's not what this is supposed to be. Book talk is supposed to be a safe place for people. And that's going to stick with that kid forever. It's so hard to set boundaries, and when something like that happens to you, you're taught how little your boundaries mean. As someone who's dealt with this, my first experience was 17 years ago now, and I'm still trying to find out how to set boundaries in a way that doesn't make me the bad guy, because I was taught that me saying no made me the bad guy, and that other people's stories were more important than mine. Well, that's not true for anyone. Doesn't matter. Everyone's story is important. Everyone is allowed to say no. Everyone is allowed to have boundaries and say, this makes me uncomfortable. This isn't right. I need you to stop and have it respected. It doesn't matter if it's a public forum where people are allowed to come. It doesn't matter. That's like going out in public and hearing a guy saying, oh, she was wearing that. So she deserved it. He posted on social media, so he deserved those comments. No one deserves to have comments made about them that make them feel uncomfortable. No one deserves to have something pushed on them after they've stated a boundary. No one deserves that. Man, woman, or child. Non-binary, intersex, I don't care. Everyone deserves to have their boundaries respected. In Book Talk, it's our freaking job to call out the people on Book Talk that do this crap. People are people. They're not characters in your books. If you want someone to objectify, go there. There are people on here that want that kind of attention. They come to Book Talk specifically for it. They come to Book Talk because it's going to make them popular. It's going to blow them up. They have to be marginally attractive and somewhat interesting. And they'll be followed. That's completely fine. Follow them. Give them that attention. And when they say it's too much for them, respect it. People are allowed to change their minds. They're allowed to withdraw consent. It's your job to respect it. It's our job to do better. It's our job to protect Book Talk and make sure that the re reputation of Book Talk isn't, oh, they're the people that are going to harass you. Look to the comments of any person that's attractive on this app and go, go immediately when you see the video and be like, hmm, I wonder if Book Talk's here yet. Really? Really? Is that what you want to be known for? If you see someone doing this, call it out immediately. No hesitation. That's all I got, I guess. I don't know what else to say to you. In that video, the creator expressed frustration with book talk, behaving as if men cannot give consent because they simply enjoy all of the attention that they have been given. He then goes on to note that these people are not characters. They are real people. And this is largely the issue I feel that exists within this space is the dehumanization of these creators that is a result of our societal treatment of male victims of sexual assault and harassment. The people behind the accounts who take part in this summoning culture aren't necessarily viewing the creators behind the screen as fully human, but instead are viewing them as the characters they read in books.
and this is regardless of how the online sexual harassment impacts those men. The creator that I showed you reflects on points that I have made here, which is that how suggesting these graphic and sexually explicit books to minors, especially when placed next to comments lingering on his youth and innocence, is in his opinion something that the cops should be called about. After all, what is your intention when you recommend these books to people, to complete strangers? Like, seriously, what is your intention when you recommend dark, sexually explicit books to A, a stranger, B, a minor, and C, without an actual request from that person? What is your goal in recommending that book to that person when that person has given you zero indication that they are seeking to read such dark and graphic material. You cannot pretend as if using the word book talk in any general format means that someone who is talking about it is opening themselves up to reading books with things like C and C and Dubcon, which this was interesting as well because people seem so firmly wrapped up in the idea that their book talk is the only book talk and therefore anybody who wants to take a part in, in book talk automatically consents to playing these fucking games. I, <clears throat> when I asked men on TikTok to share stories of what they experienced, a few of them were not comfortable doing so and I think that that is incredibly valid. However, one person did recount the following to me. He explained that while he is not a part of the book talk community, when he initially got involved with his part of the community on TikTok, that uh, he received messages from women on book talk that made him very uncomfortable. He outlined that he was receiving very explicit messages from women about what they wanted him to do to them, uh, demands to take off his mask, and demands to show them his genitals. The online sexual harassment led this person to close off his DMs as well as to going to the lengths of avoiding expressing any interest or attraction to women online. He stated that he is genuinely afraid of attracting the attention of book talk again. And I just want to like reiterate that one time that this man, <laughs> the behavior of certain people within the book talk community has made men afraid of attracting the attention of book talk. And it makes it so much more insidious that this is just normalized. Uh, like, would you walk up to a man, ogle his hands, and then tell him you like his necklace? Would you walk up to a strange man and recommend him porn? No, you wouldn't. The barrier of the internet has afforded many of these people a lack of accountability on how they approach and interact with others, and it needs to stop immediately. The barrier that the internet has provided has afforded many people a general lack of accountability in how they interact with strangers. And this is something that needs to be dealt with very swiftly as, you know, there are people now sexually harassing minors. While I myself am unsure about what steps need to be taken to take on such a largely normalized behavior, I do feel as though it's largely the responsibility of the community to call in their own. This means calling out the behavior when you see it. This means actively calling for and maintaining items such as ages and bios and clear boundaries on what you and your community accept as okay behavior. I think this means being educational occasionally on boundary setting and respecting them. I think it means being responsible about who you are engaging with and erring on the side of caution when things like age and consent aren't immediately present. It, even if the creator is posting videos encouraging this behavior, how can you engage in a way that respects that person as a human?
After all, I think a large part of this issue is that the people who are engaging in these behaviors seemingly do not respect the creators as humans with emotions, boundaries, autonomy. I This directly plays into the harmful societal structure that tells men and teen boys that it is impossible for them to be victims regardless of what happened to them and how they feel about it. And the impact of that extends far beyond TikTok, and when it comes to the impact on minors, the damage can be lifelong and extreme.